I gotta go home and eat dinner. <laughs> like, yeah, especially since they they changed the grab the grab and go used to be open until the building closed, and you could get in there and get food, but now you can't, which kind of yes. sucks. Because yeah. if okay. I could, that's what I would do. Um, some some people what they do is they'll bring like um a box of like something refrigeratable, like some kind of food that you can pop in the refrigerator and just microwave. Mm-hmm. And so they'll bring like a whole box, put their name on it, and put it in the fridges that are around. That's not a bad. And idea. then yeah, some people do it. Okay, <clears throat> let's jump right in and get through as much of this as we can. Okay, so hydrolysis of ATP releases energy, absorbs energy, is an endergonic reaction, or none of the above. Well, it most likely is going to release energy. Yep. Because it's hydrolysis. Very thick. Yeah. Hydrolysis. um, Anytime anytime that we're breaking bonds, and especially ATP, ATP is our main source of energy, like energy storage. Where we form ATP and we send ATP out to give energy um, to any of the tissues that need it. You're going to see me kind of popping back and forth just because I'm hiding the answers as we do each question. Okay, identify the coenzyme. You'll see this. There's a difference. There's coenzymes and then cofactors, right? The easiest way to remember these. I remember the coenzymes are our vitamins, cofactors. Do y'all did y'all ever watch the show Fear Factor? It's been a while since it's been on. Yes. Okay. The way that I remember that, I remember cofactors, cofactors, cofactor, factor like fear factor, and you have to pretty be pretty metal to be on fear factor. That's just the way that I remember it. It's the way that it stuck. So that's the way that I, I tell I teach people. So our mm-hmm. cofactors are going to be our metals. So if we look at these different answers, immediately we look coenzyme, we're looking for vitamins. Cofactors are metals. So of these four, which ones are cofactors? Sodium, ion, magnesium, ion. Yep, sodium and magnesium. And manganese. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, bud. I had a ba- baby pull my headphone cord. Hey. You're supposed to be asleep. <laughs> um, okay. Other one, hemoglobin. This one, really, we're down to the 50-50. Hemoglobin, we know, is it's not going to be a coenzyme. It's a protein, um, and it's functional because we know that it, its job is to carry oxygen. The answer is going to be biotin. Um, biotin is one of our mini B vitamins. I got babies I, and cats quick- running on my feet. Yeah, sure. What's up? Um, are these the questions that we did last week? Um, yeah, we were working on them at the beginning because we ended on the mycolis constant. Or is it now? No, maybe it isn't. I thought it was. Um, I, I think th- you're right. I... Yeah, because yeah, we were doing the G couple protein react- yeah. reactions. Let me. I was like, dang, this is going to be not good. I'm not going to be able to follow. And amino acid. Let me see. Pretty sure the first time. I don't know if it saves it, but it was February sixth. Yeah, let me. Let me I, maybe I just didn't save it to my computer. Let me open my email. Yeah, you're right because looking at these questions, like these are a couple of units ago. Oh, you know, I think she sent them to me through GroupMe. He did, okay. 
I don't know. I, those should have saved somewhere. I think we got two because um, haven't well, done okay, Give me, give me one sec. Okay. Okay. I know the for a fact that I saved it because I remember there was an issue with having to like <clears throat> rinse it appropriately and it wasn't opening for whatever reason. But for some I reason can, I can probably find mine. I can forward them. I, I have it. I have it he pulled up here. I just was looking for the one that I'd already turned into a PDF. But it's fine. Using Microsoft Edge for PDFs has been a game changer, by the way. So thank you for that. Oh, it's it's so nice. Um, bio. This is. Oh, okay, that should be downloading. Oh, yeah. This this is the one that looks looks right. Yes. Yeah, I think we got about to the same spot. How far did we get? Remember, Prince of Canis A. There was yeah, the... I think we got twenty one scraps. How you remember? shape and then no. remember we did that. I remember this because the little eyes yeah. the inhibitory subunit. There's an excitatory subunit. We got to twenty one. Okay, my my son found the dishwasher, so he's having a fantastic time over there. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, I think I remember we answered 21. If I remember correctly, a second messenger molecule says so with AMP because of the second. Okay. Okay, sweet. Okay. Now we're back. Okay. Which of the following chemical messengers also mediates its action through their specific nuclear receptors. So immediately keywords here that we're looking at, we're gonna look at nuclear receptors. So going through all of these, if we can think back, we for sure talked about three of these previously in these questions. We talked about acetylcholine, we talked about thyroid, we talked about insulin, and we haven't talked about cytokines before. Um, but let's stop and let's look at this. So acetylcholine, do we by any chance remember the name of those kind of receptors? It's not the nicotinic. nicotinic. Is it is it? The, the nicotinic or muscarinic That's receptors. The one I was to think of. Yeah. With acetylcholine <laughs> and like an epinephrine, <clears throat> there's a ton of like of they're not quite AKAs, but sort of like AKAs, where they're all like different names but involved with acetylcholine you'll focus more on that next try in fizz um so don't worry 
a ton about this. Just understand, like, recognize these words. If you see nicotinic, if you see muscarinic, um, if you see, like, neuromuscular junction, any of those sort of keywords, immediately jump to acetylcholine. Okay, our thyroid hormones, do you remember what type of receptors they bind to? Nuclear, right? Yep, they are nuclear receptors. What does a nuclear receptor mean? So the receptors inside the cell in the nucleus. Exactly. So the thyroid hormones, do they need any assistance to get through the plasma membrane? No. Good. They are able to slip right through. Uh, cytokines, we won't talk a ton about. Cytokines have to deal with um, pain. Let me look and see if we had, did learn the name of this in this. Um, um, okay, so cytokine receptors, they're transmembrane proteins that transmit a signal um, into the cell upon ligand binding. So we're going to put them sort of in the same group, a little bit different than our G protein but still in the same group. Our insulin receptors, they're a little bit fancy. Who remembers what our insulin, do either of you remember what our insulin receptors are about? Kind of have their own name. Just did this yesterday. Uh, is it the, um, no, that's what secretes them. They are tyrosine kinase. You also see if you ever get mentioned of like um, phosphate, phosphate type receptors, those where they're going to be referring to kind of our to our insulin receptors. So this one, three specific nuclear receptors are our thyroid hormones. This guy right there. <clears throat> tyrosine kinase, you'll really dive into tyrosine kinase and kind of the mechanics of that in physiology too. A big reason why this is important is because insulin insulin resistance um, plays a huge role in understanding the pathology of diabetes types one and two, as well as kind of what leads up to it. So it's really, really important to kind of understand insulin and the way that that all works um, later on down the road. So right now, for now, you just need to know it's tyrosine kinase. You don't need to know anything else. Okay. Well, let me make sure. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Which of the following compounds can increase cytosolic calcium ion concentrations. So this is referring to, again, all of these different components are talking about our G protein coupled receptor. So we have our beta and gamma subunits of the G protein. Um, this one, kind of understanding of what, everything that's going on. So the, the beta gamma subunits, the alpha subunit, as well as the GTPase activity of the G protein, all of these three are involved in the G protein itself, right? Remember the function, the function of the G protein, once the G protein gets activated by the receptor, what is the G protein's job? What does it go do? It activates um What's the name of that? Starts with an A. Yeah. Oh, shit. Can't think of the name of it right now. It's, it's rolling in the deep. Cyclase or... Yep, the adenylate. Adenylate cyclase. Sweet. So the only one that doesn't do that, the odd guy out, is this one right here, the enositol triphosphate. <clears throat> and if we actually look at our G protein coupled receptor... As part of it, we have off here to the side a couple of these little other extras, one of them being um, that 
you know, inositol triphosphate responsible for pulling in calcium. Let's see if I can find a. I should probably just type it in. Inositol phosphate. Triphosphate. Yeah. G for decoupled, all this kind of good stuff in there. And an acetyl triphosphate is actually in here with an endoplasmic plus reticulum responsible for releasing calcium to make everything work along here. Okay. <clears throat> Which of the following enzymes catalyze the formation of inositol triphosphate? Let me open up his book real quick. Because to be honest, this little chunk here, I feel like this is little detail stuff that's honestly just more of like a randomization rather than understanding a whole process. I just want to be sure. We look at this first. <clears throat> I don't want this to open with that. If we look at these different answers, catalyzing the formation of inositol triphosphate, we can immediately start by looking at it and seeing, okay, what can we eliminate right off the bat? We know adenylate cyclase, right? We already know the function of adenylate cyclase, and it is definitely not. Um, have anything to do with the inositol triphosphate? You guys remember what adenylate cyclase is responsible for doing? Uh, once it gets activated by ATP, it goes and activates CAMP. Perfect. Yep. So it's responsible for activating CAMP. Uh, guanylate cyclase. Um, honestly, I don't remember ever there being a mention of a guanylate cyclase. We have the difference. We use the GTP, the um, adenosine, the guanine triphosphate um, as part of the, our, the process, but we don't ever really ever talk about that. And then our phosphodiesterase. If it has ACE on the end, anything that's ACE, we know it's our enzymes. Our phosphodiesterases are enzymes involved in the homeostasis of both CAMP and CG and cyclic GMP. So they're going to be responsible for the regulation of those guys. What's left is phospholipase C. I'm trying to get his book to find the right spot in the book. Because I honestly, I've read the book a couple of times at this point. And I don't remember a ton of, I don't remember really ever talking about inositol triphosphate, which is why I'm kind of. Well, and I watched your video that you did that you went through the book in that chapter, and I don't remember you saying anything about it in that either. Yeah. If it's in here, more than likely he'll throw a question or two. There'll be a question or two, um, probably almost these exact questions. Um, in their in the exam, but this is kind of like going through this is the difference, you know, making that difference between the the B the the B on the exam and the A on the exam, just like those little extra tidbits. Because I don't see it's mentioned here. We have an, an isotol triphosphate as the second messenger, but other than that I really don't see any like specific mention of it in at least through this chapter. So little tidbit, we have the question here. Um possible lipase C is responsible for the formation. So this is probably just something I would probably put a little star next to and say just to keep this in mind. Um look go back over these questions before the test. And that might specific that specific question might just pop up. 
Okay. <clears throat> Which of the following enzymes inactivates the action of cyclic AMP? Camp dependent phosphodiesterase. That is correct. And again, this is just um, Cheryl, were you here? You weren't here last week, were you? Yeah, I was, but um, okay. still not clicking. Um, biggest thing I can recommend, draw the whole process out. Take a couple times, draw it, write in all the little nitty gritty details. <clears throat> and if you can, if you're able to draw it out two, three times and add in those little extra details, because the phosphodiesterase um, within the explanations, it will have it in there. Um, drawing it out and writing it a couple of times is definitely going to help it kind of stick. And then when you do these kind of practice questions, I would come back on your own as well. Look back through these questions and go and try and figure it out without looking at any notes or anything and try and actively recall, answer the questions. And then look up the answers and figure out if you get an answer wrong, don't just accept it that, okay, that's wrong and find the right answer. Figure out why the wrong answer is wrong and why the right answer is right. There's a lot, you can get a lot more um, from questions by doing that than you can um, just figuring out what the right answer is. Which of the following enzymes inactivates the action of cyclic AMP? This is just the exact same question as above. I was like, isn't didn't we just hit some things? Just different answer choices. Yeah, it's the same exact question. So if it's on here twice, it's a safe bet. That's probably on the test. It was also on my pre-quiz thing for the cell signaling because I took that tonight and it was on there. So so it's probably a good bet that that's going to be on the cell signaling quiz at least once. Uh, which of the following first messenger, that's a key word right there, first messenger molecules has both cytosolic and nuclear receptors. Just... So look... Acetylcholine, remember acetylcholine, are those membrane, cytosolic, or nuclear receptors? Membrane. These are our membrane. What are the two most common names that we refer to with those that we talk about? Nicotinic. Nicotinic. What's the other one? Muscarinic. 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 Yeah. yeah. Sweet. Glucagon. Where is, let me look up. Glucagon as well. Um, it's a member of the G protein coupled family of receptors. <laughs> you don't ever, we don't ever really talk about glucagon receptors very much other than like a, just a distractor answer. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen glucagon be the answer choice to a question. Is there any situation where it would be a first messenger? Glucagon? Yeah. Glucagon is a first messenger. It's just it's membrane protein as well. It's a G protein coupled oh. protein. So it's it's membrane as well. Well, I guess that would make sense because you have to break down glucagon to make glucose to function. Yeah. Um <clears throat> nor epinephrine. Oftentimes, norepinephrine and acetylcholine, they're kind of both in the same boat, um, where they're also going to be focusing on being membrane, because they're also, norepinephrine is, is both a hormone and, in, um, and a neurotransmitter, and a neurotransmitter. So that leaves us with estrogens as our only answer that can be the correct one. 
Um, a little bit easier way to remember this, there's a little chart that Dr. Sarkar has in his book. This is one just like this. We have a peptides, catecholamine, and eicosanoids are our second messengers. Um, steroid, vitamin D, all of these guys. Steroids, such as testosterone. Remember, um, testosterone, uh, steroid, estrogen, and testosterone are both in the same boat. So he likes he likes this little chart. He'll pull quite a few, literally just like questions straight off of here. Where he's like, what kind of receptor does is vitamin D have? What kind of receptors does the thyroid have? What type of receptors are nitric oxide? That sort of stuff. And this doesn't have everything on it. So I would even go in and, and add in here. Estrogen, you can add in. Estrogen also does, also has a cytosolic component. The book can't be perfect and have every single answer. Take way too much time to edit. But using all the resources together, we can can figure out all the we can go back in and we can add the stuff that we need. Which of the following hormones mediates its action through their specific plasma membrane receptors? Me. Sorry, come back in. Let's do this. Away. Okay. Aldosterone, retinoids, norepinephrine, and estrogen. Well, our previous question that we literally just were asked, estrogen was not a plasma membrane receptor. Um, retinoids and aldosterone, again, at no point have we really seen those at all in any of the material that we've looked at so far. We could look them up. Um, but again, the, our plasma membrane receptors, norepinephrine and epinephrine uh, and acetylcholine are the main ones that we're always going to see with those answers. And again, a, a lot of this part is just kind of it's just raw memorization. Unfortunately, um, you can get you can get into like how like their chemical makeup and everything, but that's takes a lot longer than just memorizing it. OK. Our next question. Which of the following is an allosteric activator of the enzyme protein kinase A, a.k.a. PKA? Camp. Camp. What was that? Isn't it camp? camp. We... I don't know. Is it camp? I think it is because camp activates PKA in That's the correct. thing. Yeah. Yeah. If remember, PKA, PKA is made up of kind of shaped like this, right? Because it's got the. Mm. R groups and the control groups, right? Yep, perfect. The R groups and the C groups. So cyclic AMP comes and it allosterically binds onto this. And which of the two are C or are our, our R? Which one is active? Which one is the active form? The C. I'm going to be I completely think. honest. I don't remember right now. So let me look I'm it up. <laughs> pretty sure it's C. I'm pretty sure that that's right. But just to be safe. Come on. Sorry, my computer has been struggling the past couple of days to just to load anything. It's probably because of how much I use it. Probably. Mm 
I'm gonna stop sharing for a second while this pulls up. That might help. If I disappear, I'll come right back. Come on. Come on. Oh my goodness. Uh you were correct. Our C groups are our active groups. Goodness. I'm gonna have to restart my computer after this. Let it get a, maybe let it take a break for a little bit. C, R. So C groups, R groups, these come off. And these are our active portion right here. Which of the following is not involved in the specificity of signal transduction? So when we break this down a little bit, we talk about specificity. We're talking about kind of how there's one specific thing that occurs with signal transduction. When we talk about signal transduction, it's kind of a, a fancy word. Um, Either of you know, understand kind of what that is referring to. I'm talking about signal transduction. Not really. I'm pretty sure I had a question like that on my pre quiz thing, to, but I don't really remember. <laughs> yeah, so when we talk about transduction, right, um, we can, another way that they, they talk about it is kind of the signal cascade where when you, it's something is transduced, it's kind of passed along and spread. So the signal transduction is kind of is how the signal actually gets started and spread and goes across to the next thing. How it gets transduction, how it gets transferred to the next thing and transferred and transferred and transferred, and then continues to to affect more and more part of this parts of the cell. So in this case, we're going to look at like our transmembrane protein signal molecules, transmembrane transport of signal molecules by the receptor molecules. That should be the answer. Um, again, wording on this question isn't. I don't love the way that everything is worded. It's a little bit deeper kind of concept. Um, but when we talk about the specificity aspect. When we talk about receptors, remember that receptors are going to have little spaces in them. So like if this is to make it smaller, if we have a receptor here, it's going to have a specific shape in order to accept a specific type of protein. So that's the specificity of it. Where if we ever talk about specificity, a lot of times we're either talking about enzymes or we're talking about receptors, like enzymes, the receptor binding sites. So that's our first clue when we see specificity. 
think receptors, think enzymes, that kind of stuff, binding sites. So, um, and then we see the transduction. Transduction is going to be occurring of what's passing the signal because of the ligands. So it's the signal molecules. Again, this is a little bit more of a complicated question and one that if it's going to be asked, it's going to be asked just like this. So this is kind of see this question, know like roughly what this question is talking about. And then from there, if you see something similar on the test, you have an answer for it. Um, or honestly, it might just be one that if it's this is hard, a harder concept to grasp, you might just skip over it and just click an answer. I don't want to say click the longest answer. But that is a test taking strategy where if you do have no clue and like one answer is longer than the others, a lot of times teachers will put the longer answer as the correct answer. Just a little test taking strategy there for you guys. Yeah, I've been doing that one for a long time. I actually did it to students as, as a teacher, too, so. This one, Elizabeth, I think this one you should be able to to knock out pretty quick. Which of the following is the most correct sequence in the cell signaling pathway? So immediately we look at this first choice. Is this first choice going to be our most correct sequence? Hang on, I'm going to switch back over. I was on my notes. Oh. It's not showing your screen. Oh. Oh, I hope I wasn't doing that for the last couple of questions. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I was on my notes looking at my drawing of the. OK, the so here's here's the previous one question. Specificity is talking about receptors. The transduction is the signal molecules. They fit the very specific spot. Pick the longest choice, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Which of the following is the most correct sequence in the cell signaling pathway? Okay, so it's definitely not going to start with the second messenger. Definitely not. Boom. Doesn't start with the second messenger. We look at it. We have two with the first messenger. Again, it's another test taking strategy. If two of them, if two of your answer choices start with the same thing, more than likely it's one of those two. Again, this is a little bit more like if you're not 100% sure on the answer and you're just trying to narrow it down to guess, pick one of the ones where the first part of the multiple step question, the first part is um, uh, the same. That or if you look at answer choices and you have four choices and two of them are opposites of each other, like one says inward, one says outward. Again, more than likely, one of those is going to be the answer choice. More test taking strategy. OK. So, and in this case, we have the receptor transducer effector, first messenger signal molecule. The first messenger signal molecule, we know it comes first because it is going to come. And what's the very first thing that our first messenger molecule, AKA ligand, what is the first thing that it comes into contact with? The receptor. Receptor. So right there, just by knowing those first two, we don't have to look at the rest of the question. B is our correct answer. Okay, question 32. Which of the following molecular molecules can exert their actions through specific nuclear receptors? Again, this is another repeat question. The answer is thyroid hormones. Um, if you haven't noticed by now, Dr. Sarkar loves thyroid hormone questions. He he puts so many thyroid questions on everything. I feel like he said something about that being part of his doctoral dissertation or something in lecture. It was, yeah. I only halfway paid attention to his lecture this week, this week but I remember him saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Which of the following molecules can be a first messenger 
to initiate a receptor ligand mediated signal transduction pathway. So we have protein kinase, sodium, insulin, G protein, alpha subunit. So we're specifically looking at a first messenger. Another name for the first messenger is our chemical. What's the name of the messenger chemical that we use? Starts with an L. Ligand. Our ligand. So which of these most likely would we expect to act as a ligand? Not protein kinase. They're not protein kinase not because sodium. that's sodium. Not sodium. What about the, the alpha subunit of the G protein? It's got to get activated first. Yeah, and also it's it's stuck in the membrane. Yeah. If it's stuck in the membrane, it's not going to act as a first messenger molecule. So our answer would be insulin. And our insulin, what's the name of the type of receptor that insulin binds to? Tyrosine. Is it kinase? Yep, tyrosine kinase. What do kinases do? What do kinase enzymes do? I don't remember. Kinase, and this is super, super important to know this now. Kinases phosphorylate stuff. Phosphorylate stuff. Please, please, please know that, especially um, before the end of the end of the try. The end of this try and the beginning of next try, you focus hard on um, glycolysis, the Krebs cycle. Um, that sort of stuff. And the kinases, you know, ki every time that there's a kinase, that's where some form of ATP is going to be formed, going to be made. And those are going to be our primary rate limiting steps. I should clarify. It's not always ATP is not always formed in those spots. But when you have a kinase, those are typically our rate limiting steps, which are the ones that we need to remember for exams. Which of the following molecules is an allosteric activator protein kinase A? Uh, this is, again is another repeat question. Okay. Our cyclic AMP. Um, what is the function of ATP in the G protein coupled receptor? It activates um, PKA. No, it attaches to the adenylate cyclase to make camp. Correct. It's used by the adenylate cyclase in order to um, produce the camp, which in the cyclic AMP then goes to the protein kinase A. Which of the following molecules separates the regulatory subunit from the inactive protein kinase A? Of the inactive. I feel like the way that's worded is confusing me, but I want to say it's the camp. I want to say that you are correct. So the way that it's worded is a little bit confusing. You're right. So if you remember, we're talking about PKA, the protein kinase A, we have the regulatory subunit, the R subunit, and then the what becomes the active subunit. We call it the C, the C subunit. So what this is saying is that because when it's bound to the regulatory subunit, it's considered the inactive protein kinase A. So the active we can write write this as the the active protein kinase A is the C subunit's 
by themselves. When they are bound to the R subunits or the regulatory subunits, they are the inactive PKA, like that. So that's that's kind of what what that is saying specifically. That's just the wording explained of that question. I love these questions that say all of the above, but it's like choice B of all four. That bothers me. Um, it does bother me as well. Always assume if they're out of order like this, it's just because Blackboard will do like randomization uh, like of the questions. So <clears throat> assume if it says like all of the above, uh, assume that it's meaning all of the choices. Uh, which of the following molecules? Ooh. Excuse me. Which of the following molecules specifically binds to their membrane receptors to elicit a functional response? So membrane receptors, that would be acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is, is the correct answer. Um, the bigger case would be because insulin and glucagon also come and they bind to membrane receptors. The the big difference here is is the is supposed to be like the functional response. Um, in this context, I want to say when it says functional response, it's more referring to kind of movement. If it had said like if more of a physiological response, I would lean more towards like insulin and glucagon. And if it's both of those, answer would have to be all of the above. So when you say functional response, think movement. Acetylcholine is our um, is in the neuromuscular junction, which assists, which allows for action potentials to go down into muscles and for muscles to move, the muscles to be activated. And that'll be your first big chunk of Phys 1 is learning about the neuromuscular junction and that whole process. Which of the following pair of signaling molecules mediates their action through G protein coupled receptors? So immediately we look on here. This is interesting. We have insulin, insulin, and insulin. All on those. Are insulin G protein coupled receptors or something else? Mm, they're not. They're tyrosine kinase. Exactly. So right there, because all three of those have the same choice. And it's not correct. It's going to be glucagon and norepinephrine. So they just knowing the fact that insulin is a tyrosine kinase gave us that answer in literally five seconds. Oh, we're on the last question of this whole thing. Which of the following subunits of the guanine nucleotide binding protein possesses intrinsic GTPase activity. So this is a lot of big words. This whole guanine nucleotide binding protein. But easier way of saying this. This is our oops. Uh, do, this is our RG protein. Just just the full big fancy name. So uh, what is first? Let's ask, ask the question. What is GTPase activity? Or what is what is GTPase? Well, it's an enzyme because it's nice. So it's an enzyme. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's like the intrinsic, it's intrinsically in the alpha subunit. I know that. I don't remember exactly what it does though. Yeah, so you're right. It is going to be the alpha subunit. So if you remember, GTP, what does GTP stand for? So it's guanine triphosphate triphosphate so triphosphate gtp is very very similar to atp right what's the function what's the purpose of atp what does atp do for us energy energy 
So ATP carries energy, so does GTP. It's the same function, just a different little bit of a base. So that way, I'm, it's most likely because of the binding of where it needs to go, where it needs to bind, and how it interacts with stuff. So GTPase, it's an enzyme. It's going to break our GTP, break off a of phosphate to turn it into GDP, and then um, and release energy. So if you remember our G protein reaction, let's find it here. It looks like I need to add that into my drawing. Do, 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 do. So we go through all the 8 million pages of, here we go. So within here, we have the GTP that comes in and binds GTP here. Mm -hmm. Our alpha subunit contains our intrinsic GTPase because if GTP stays here forever, it's never going to rejoin with our beta and gamma subunits. And so it's never going to turn off. So it needs to be able to turn off once it's finished the reaction that it's that it's supposed to do. So the purpose is our alpha subunit right here that stays bound to the GTP has the intrinsic GTP, so it holds kind of it holds the enzyme that's going to break down the GTP back into GDP into the diphosphate, go the guanine diphosphate. Um, and when it breaks the breaks off that phosphate, it's going to cause the beta and the gamma components, the beta and the gamma subunits, to come back and rebind. And then it sits again inactive as it until it wait and as it waits for another ligand to come bind to the receptor and the receptor to come over and react and start the activation process again, where GTP comes back in and binds and kicks the GDP off. And then we activate again. So the alpha subunit's intrinsic GTPase function is to self deactivate the activated form of the protein. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I just Sweet. need to add that into my drawing. Okay, so that's all of these questions. Oh, okay. Sweet. Do you guys? How are y'all feeling? Do you want to? Um, I don't have the next chunk. I don't know if one of you have it. Um, we can continue going with the next section's questions. Or I know lots of exams, lots of stuff going on this week. We can just put a pin in it here for tonight since we finish this. What would you guys like to do? I'm good with whatever you want to do, Cheryl. Because I know you have the questions. Yeah, I've I've got the questions. Um, no, I'm I'm maxed out and I'm lost on this part anyway. So, I need to, drawing I need to it really does help. I that's what I did after I had my kind of aha moment last week when we were going over it, and mm -hmm. then I went and I drew it out. It really does help. Yeah. So let me see if I can. Um, I'm pretty sure within this video. Yeah, I've watched them all. I, I need to. I need to draw it out. Is go back into this video like, with this video. Let me. Mm -hmm. For some reason, my YouTube hasn't been letting me skip ads. It's super annoying. Here's another uh, school tip for you guys. If uh, you don't have this Chrome extension, Video Speed Controller. I highly recommend that you get it. It allows you to speed videos up in increments of 10%. And it works on any video that you have open on Google Chrome. So very, video, very helpful. Video speed controller? Yeah, video speed controller. So mm -hmm. what I would even do with um, pet side, second semester, serotonin hormones. There you go. Like I would come to this chunk. As he draws through this as well, as he draws through this, pause along with it and draw the whole process out. 
he'll he'll go through a lot more in even like in more in depth than we probably need to know. Um, as well, when I post the video from last week, last week I did draw through it once as well. But just take your time, add in all the different components, um, and do do it a couple of times if you can draw it out. And every time that you get, try and draw it from memory. One like draw it all out once nicely, and then stop. Put that aside, and then try and draw it from memory. And then if you get stuck on a point, then kind of stop. Try and think about it for a second before you go and look back at kind of your example. And then see that one part and then try and continue the drawing from memory. The more times that you can try and recall, like it's called active recall. The more that you can force your brain to try and remember, the more you're it's kind of like you're you're poking your brain and telling your brain like, hey, this is important. You need to remember this. And the more likely your brain is to actually develop neural connections to do it. If you can, I know it's getting late. Do it once or twice before you go to bed tonight. What you actually, the heck? Now you lost me. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't do it once or twice before you go to bed, even like the rough drawing of it, you don't have to include all the details. If you can do it once or twice before you go to bed tonight, you actually solidify neural links while you sleep. So you click on the 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 title um, shot again. What it say? Endocrine something. Yeah, endocrinology receptor pathways. Okay. All right. All right. We'll call here for tonight, guys. Thank you. Sounds good. Good night. Good luck on all y'all's exams. Wish okay. you the Thank best. You. Thank Have you. Have a good night. You too.